Well, hey, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Amazing Seller Podcast. This is episode number 280 and session number 84 of Ask Scott. This is where I answer your questions here on the podcast, and I enjoy every single minute of it. That's right. It's it's really a lot of fun, and it's a highlight of my week. I've said this before, but if you guys are brand new, well, you've just heard it. If you guys are tuning in again, well, you guys have heard it probably, well, 84 times at least. Uh, this is session 84 anyway. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I just wanted to just say welcome and hopefully your week is going well. If you're listening to this on a Friday, the day that it comes out, hopefully you're ready for a great weekend, whatever you have planned. Maybe it is work on your business. I don't know, uh, but uh, hopefully you are ready to rock it. All right, and get out there and make something happen. Um, I did want to uh, first off say that if you guys have any questions that you want me to answer on an upcoming Ask Scott session, head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash ask and you can do that. You can ask a question there, just record a voicemail with your first name and maybe even where you're tuning in from. That would be kind of cool. And then a brief question. Um, I do generally try to answer all of them, but there is quite a queue that I have already uh, kind of built up that we have to uh, we have to kind of work through. So I'm going to try to answer three or four today. And uh, if you guys have one, definitely submit it there. That would be awesome. Uh, just to let you guys know too, if you have any other questions, not just related to, and I'm doing the air quotes, Amazon uh, business, if it just has to do with business or building your external channel or sales funnels or email uh, list building or any any of that stuff, if you guys have any questions on that submit them. Feel feel free to submit them as well. They don't have to be just specific towards Amazon. Um, you guys have been hearing me talk a lot lately about us building our external launch list or playing around with other social platforms to build up a launch list or an email list. And if you guys have questions about that, fire away. Go ahead and ask them. Uh, I did want to give you the word of the week. I'm starting to do this. I'm actually doing it for myself, but I'm also going to do it here with you. So this way here, we can kind of share this together. But the word of the week for me is kindness. So what that basically means to me is how can we be better people? Like how can we how can we make someone smile in a sense? Or how can we just be a little bit nicer to someone, right? A uh, perfect example is... Uh, I was uh, driving through Dunkin' Donuts. Well, you guys know I love, love my coffee. So I was driving through Dunkin' Donuts. Um, I didn't go to Starbucks this day. I went to Dunkin'. It's hot coffee. And uh, just if you guys care. Uh, so I was driving through. And um, you guys have probably heard this too. If you guys are longtime listeners, I always kind of give people a grade on how well they did with customer service. And I have to be honest, like this Dunkin' Donuts by me, I mean, their customer service is top notch. Some of the ones in New York, I'm not going to say all, but some of the ones in New York, uh, they could probably take a few lessons here. These people are just genuinely happy, like, you know, really, really excited just to get, take your order. I mean, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, welcome to Dunkin' Donuts. How can I help you today? Like, I mean, just energetic and, you know, the pitch in their voice and just when you actually talk to them, you don't feel like they're annoyed that you're ordering a, a coffee. So I guess for, for seeing that type of stuff, I like to, again, kind of think about how can we, how can we do that ourselves? Like, how can we make someone else smile? How can we make someone else uh, feel a little bit better after they purchase something from us, right? So this all kind of ties back into just being good to people. And I believe that that'll come back and help you. Like I said, if it's in business, it's just customer service, right? It's follow-ups. It's like, how do you deliver you know, a better user experience? Um, it was funny. I was listening to uh, an audio book the other day and uh, on my walk in the morning and they were talking about uh, Dollar Shave Club. You probably heard they got bought out for a ton of money, but it really comes down to them building a loyal following, a loyal brand around a razor. Who would have thought that men would want razors delivered to their house on a monthly basis when, again, talking about Amazon, we can go to Amazon and I'm sure that there are blades there that we can buy and have them auto shipped. I'm sure that there's something out there, but people are loyal to that particular brand, so they're going to keep buying. And once they start buying, as long as they're happy and they still, uh, you know, put out their, their brand message, which is really about having fun in a sense, right? Their video that went viral was all about just funny, right? So it's, again, 
it's something that we all can probably do. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to, if, if you're kind of in the space where you want to just launch some products and see what sticks, then, then yeah, this isn't going to be like that model, but it still means that you can, uh, that you can still give them a good user experience, whatever product you sell, right? But if you're going to build a brand, that's where you would take those products that you might want to start focusing on and then building that into a brand. And if you did that, that's where this, you know, this, this customer experience really comes in. Guys, I don't even know how I went down that rabbit hole, but it's just kind of how I roll. You guys know that. It's like, it just, it's top of mind. It came down to the word of the day, which is kindness, right? So be kind to more people. And I do truly believe that that'll always bring, you know, better things back to you. You know, whether that's uh, just someone else making your day better or whether it's financially, it's just, I believe that it will come back to you. And I know it's all cliche and all that, but it's, to me, it's the truth. Okay. So the word of the day, the word of the week kindness. All right. Be kind to one another and, uh, I'm sure it'll do you well. All right. So before we jump into today's questions, let me remind you that the show notes for everything on this episode will be at, uh, the amazing forward slash two eighty. That is session two eighty, of course. So the amazing forward slash two eighty transcripts, show notes, all right there. Go check them out and uh, do me a favor. If you guys think that the podcast is valuable enough to share, then share it. If you don't, don't share it. All right. So just uh, just want to throw that out there. I would love for you guys to let your friends and family know maybe about the podcast, and then we can share a little bit of that love, a little bit of that kindness that we just talked about. All right. So guys, let's go ahead and listen to today's first question, and I will give you my answer. Let's do it. Hey Scott, Lance Ewing here. My son, uh, four-year-old son Jax, and I really, uh, really love the show. And uh, I've been listening to it for a while. I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit because I'm just getting started, and I listen to some at the beginning and some at the some of the newer ones as well. And my question is, I'm uh, testing uh, samples from China at the moment, and I have a product that uh, is selling really well on Amazon, and I'm trying to change it just a little bit. But with that, they're saying that they cannot put the logo on the product. I'm basically putting a wrap around an existing product, and there's no room to put the logo. They said they can put it on the box, and I'm concerned because I want to have a, a brand name on the product um, as well as the box, and I'm not sure as far as branding goes with Amazon. I think they've switched maybe where you have to have both, but I'm not sure. So that's my question. Um, again, I really, uh, really appreciate everything as far as the podcast goes, and um, I'm looking to... Um, to uh, start your course here in the next uh, in the next couple weeks, and uh, just uh, thank you for everything. Uh, from Dallas, talk to you later. Well, first off, Lance, I absolutely love that uh, voicemail that your son recorded. That is just awesome. I think that's a first. I think that's a first. Uh, so congratulations on that, by the way. And uh, yeah, just thank you so much for that. And tell your son that I said high five or not said, maybe you can high five him and say, Scott said he wants me to high five you. Uh, that would be cool. Um, I think you said his name was Jack or Jackson. I couldn't understand. But anyway, just wanted to give him a shout out and say thank you so much for being listener of the podcast. And uh, again, I want to just say, you know, yes, bouncing around is okay because, you know, things are changing. And as you go through them, you might want to start going through a little bit of the ones that are more current. Um, anyone else that's brand new to listening to the podcast, there's a lot of episodes that are still very, very relevant, but a few things might have been changed or tweaked. Um, so then it's always good to kind of listen to some of the more current ones as well, especially about any of these changes. Um, that might be uh, happening or that have happened. Um, so this way here, you can kind of adjust, uh, you know, towards uh, towards your plan. All right. So, um, okay, let me answer your question. Now, okay, you're saying that you have a product right now that's selling very well. It sounds like it's selling really well. So that's awesome. Congratulations on that. Round of applause. Okay. But now let's talk about the branding aspect of things. Now, I think what you're saying is your product doesn't really lend itself well to being branded, or you're saying that the manufacturer doesn't want to brand that product or says that they can't brand that product. So I would want to look into that further, whether it's a tag that could be put on it or if it can be engraved into it or some way to have 
just some type of initialing in a sense that marks it as your product because if you are going to be branded or brand registered, uh, it will make it better if it's on the product. Now, I don't know 100% if it has to be on the product. It just has to be branded in the packaging or the wrapping um, of that product, okay? You have to be able to show a picture of your branding on the product, and that that branding could be just if it's saran wrapped or not saran wrapped, shrink wrapped, uh, and and you have the the logo on that. That could be um, enough, okay? But I would work really hard to try to get them to brand the product if you can. If not, then definitely the box, definitely the wrapping that's you know surrounding the product, whether it's uh like like we said, like if it's shrink wrap or any other type of wrapping, you would want that branded. Um, So this way here, you have it kind of concealed into the box and into the the wrapping, and it shows your brand all the way through. So this way here, if you had a claim that someone was trying to hijack or someone was trying to make a counterfeit of your product, well, then you would be able to prove that, no, theirs doesn't have this because ours is especially branded here. This will just help you in the future if you ever run across a problem. So I would work on getting that done and making it, uh, you know, like I said, as branded as possible that you're allowed to do within, you know, your manufacturer, whatever they can do. Um, so I would definitely work on that, especially if you're telling me that the product is selling very well and, uh, and, and you want to go ahead and do that now. So I would definitely say that that would be one of my priorities. So hopefully this has helped you. Um, uh, And like I said, I would probably make this a priority to try to get that done. One last thing is though, once you do get it branded on your packaging or uh, even on the item itself, I would show that in your pictures. So this way here, it's also going to show anyone that's possibly thinking about uh, hijacking or whatever, or you know, taking over your your product or or your brand, they're gonna know it's not gonna be that easy because you are branded, you know, within that product. So just another little side note there for you. All right, so let's go ahead and listen to the next question, and I will give you my answer. Hey Scott, this is Jeremy. I had a uh, quick question about whenever you're selling a product, um, let's say the garlic press, and you offer it in multiple colors, how do you talk to the supplier and and uh, get them to ship to FBA, and what is the process of setting up your account to do that? Also, um, pre-bundling, how would you, say, get a garlic press and a home storage container and bundle them together without actually having it shipped to your house, repackaging them, and and uh, shipping it to FBA? Is there a way to get the manufacturers to work together to do something like that? Hey, Jeremy, thank you so much for the question. And it's kind of like a two-part question. The first part of it, I have answered uh, quite a bit in the past, but I'm going to answer it again here real quick. Uh, But really, you have to think about your your listing and having variations. Like you have the parent and then you have the the child or or the child uh, because you are the tri- the children we should say uh, because it's uh, it's the main listing for the the one like say the garlic press. But then you have a red one, a blue one, a yellow one, and a green one. Those are all variations underneath that same listing. So each variation will have its own SKU, its own FNSQ, or its own UPC, its own marker in a sense. And then your manufacturer will then and ship into those once you give them give them the uh, the actual shipping uh, details. You're going to create that stuff for them, and then you're just going to hand off the paperwork, and then it's going to get sent in to Amazon, and then Amazon will put it in for that SKU. All right. Now the other part of the question, it's a good question too, by the way, is okay if I have uh, you know maybe I want to put uh, you know the the red one in with the blue one. I want to have a combo pack. It's going to be a red and a blue one. Uh, and what you're asking is, is can I just have either my manufacturer pre-do that or do I have to ship it to my house and do it myself or can I have Amazon do that? Well, Amazon's not going to gonna do that for you. They're just not going to, okay? Uh, the I guess the easiest way for you, I say, in the beginning would be for you to pack it yourself and then ship it in. I say easiest, meaning that you don't have to get the manufacturer involved. You just order the pieces and then you put them together in its own box. It's going to then, again, have its own UPC. It's going to have its own SKU, okay? Because now when they go and pick and pack that, it's going to get picked up with you know one box, let's say, and it's going to get shipped out as the red and the blue, Okay. 
And then, so that means, again, if you have a manufacturer that's going to do this, they will then, in turn, have to do the same thing. So if you can get your manufacturer to do it, if they manufacture both pieces, it's easy, right? All we have to do is say, hey, take the red one, the blue one, put it in one box, and also send me singles of the red and the blue in their own box. Now I have basically three SKUs. I have a single one for each one, and then I have a, a maybe a, a two-pack, all right? Or maybe a three-pack, right? So that, that would be the perfect scenario is having them do it. The problem with that though, too, is you got to remember each time that you create a new UPC code it, for, you know, for, uh, ordering your inventory and stuff, you have to fill more inventory with the same product in a sense, because if you have a red one, that's going to be like, let's say you want to order 500 of the red, you order 500. You want 500 of the blue, you order 500. Now, if you want 500 of the red and the blue combo pack, that's a whole nother skew, but a whole nother set of inventory, right? So again, when people are doing these variations, you guys have to keep in mind that every time you do those variations, it might be smart to do smaller amounts on the variations to see which one is going to start selling. So this way here, you're not putting 500 pieces out there and hoping that it's going to sell. Uh, so I would do that and I would definitely make sure that you test that before you go and say, go ahead and package everything up and ship it in. Um, now going back to if the manufacturer does not manufacture the second part or the second piece of your bundle, then yes, you can have them work together. Um, I actually uh, know someone right now that has done that and they've done it successfully and, uh, and you can totally do that. Okay. You just have to, again, do a little bit of, you know, communications with your manufacturer, letting them know about the one that's going to be shipping the product to them. They're going to have to wait until they get that maybe until they can package it, but some will do it and some won't. You got to have that conversation. I think is the big thing here. You got to have that conversation with your, uh, with your supplier and see if that's something that they will do. Now, if you can't do that, there's another option that you can do is, is have it sent to a, to a uh, prepping facility. And what they'll do is they can co-pack it. It's what they, that's what we call co-packing where they'll take the parts and then they'll put it together in a box. They're going to charge you for it, of course. But if you were going to ship it to your home and have maybe, uh, you know, some friends of your, of your kids pack it up, well, you're going to pay them too. So, um, I think in the beginning, you just have to validate that that bundle or the package is going to work. And then if it does, then you can worry about streamlining that process. All right. So I know that was a long winded answer, but um, it can get complicated when uh, when you're thinking about, well, I'm just going to do a bundle, but not realizing that the bundle is actually its own separate UPC. OK, or its own separate SKU. All right. So just want to kind of clarify that. All right. So hopefully this has helped you. Good luck with that and uh, let me know if you have any other questions. All right, let's go ahead and listen to another question and I'll give you my answer. Hi Scott, my name is Tova. I need a product that is an improvement on an existing very well selling product on Amazon. I launched around four weeks ago. I have 10 reviews and I'm selling around 15 a day. How do I prevent myself from getting copied and easily surpassed being that it only has 10 reviews? Obviously, 15 a day is great. I don't need to do more giveaways um, to get more sales. Um, but should I do a big giveaway just to prevent somebody from easily surpassing me on my listing for the same product? So does it make sense to get more reviews um, just to prevent somebody from copying me and then surpassing my surpassing my listing? Um, thank you so much for your podcast. It has been extremely valuable to me and I look forward to your answer. Thank you. Hey, Tova, thank you so much for the question, and uh, congratulations on 15 sales a day, by the way. That's, uh, that's really awesome, and that's uh, worth celebrating. So definitely celebrate any way that you think that you should celebrate, whether that's with uh, a nice coffee or maybe a nice mocha, whatever you do to celebrate. Go ahead and have a nice celebration drink. Um, I think you deserve it. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, I mean, that's a good question, right? You're you're wondering like, okay, I've launched this product. I've got 10 reviews, which by the way, you know, everyone that's thinking to themselves, well, I have to go out there and, and do these massive giveaways. This is proof that you don't, okay? And it sounds like, uh, Tova, you have actually you know, did some product research well that found a product that didn't have to compete on reviews, which is really, really awesome because that's the, to me, that's the, the, 
the secret ingredient really now is finding products that are selling with low amounts of reviews. So this way here, you don't have to get into the review, you know, battle in a sense, right? Or, or the, you know, the, the, the competition on reviews, like that's not what we want to do. And this is a perfect example, 15 units a day, right? With 10 reviews. Awesome. Now. Okay. So to talk about like you're nervous that someone else is going to come in, launch the same product and then just get more reviews and they're going to, they're going to do better than you. It's a good concern. Okay. But I would more or less be uh, thinking about how can I continually get sales? Okay. Currently I, how you're doing it, maybe dialing up the paper, click some making sure that you're following up with your customers to get to get those reviews, okay, or to make sure that they're happy, okay, as in the beginning here, kindness, being kind to them and, and making sure that they got what they wanted, and then those will naturally start to happen, and you're going to be building your rank, okay, so you're going to start to rank. Once you get seated in your rank, it's going to be hard for someone to just come in and knock you off now because you've got that history in a sense, so I would really be focusing on that. I wouldn't necessarily be, be wondering to myself, like, how can I get 100 reviews right now so I can make sure that no one can compete with me? I would just continue doing what you're doing. I would also try to make your product have something additional to it that no one else is going to be offering or that is going to make it harder for someone to just piggyback on what you're doing. That would be one of my next things. Now that you see that this thing is selling, how can you, how can you improve it? How can you make it better? How can you make it, uh, you know, something that is going to be harder for them to, uh, to be able to, uh, you know, go out and find. And a perfect example of this is like, if you already got something that's selling well, and then for you to go ahead and find something else small that could be added to that, that doesn't cost you all that much, but you can put it in there, um, at a very, very low cost. That's going to be something that again, they would have to find the source for the second part of that. Kind of like what we just talked about, like with the co-packing and, and finding that other thing that you're going to bundle. This would be one of those, uh, scenarios where I would say that would be good. Or again, just really, really focusing on, you know, keeping the sales going and getting yourself ranked for, for so many keywords that it's going to be hard for someone to just come in and compete with a handful of keywords. So I wouldn't be worrying too much about, uh, someone knocking me off because they get more reviews than you. And then all of a sudden they're going to be able to overtake your product and your listing. I, I wouldn't be too concerned with that. Um, again, sales, that's what I'd be, I'd be, uh, you know, kind of thinking about and working on. And then from there, the reviews should follow. Uh, again, I would, I mean, as of right now that I'm recording this, we're still able to, uh, to reach out to our customers and make sure that they received everything that was promised. Uh, you get to connect with them on a personal level, which I think a lot of people don't do. Um, and the reason why I say we can now, because who knows what, what can happen in the future, right? Amazon could take that privilege away from us, maybe, you know? And, and the way that that would happen is just people abusing it, right? I'm saying for you to connect with your customers with, you know, that word of the week, kindness, and make sure that they got everything that they were uh, promised. And if they have any questions, be, you know, be right there. I mean, fast, like customer service, like be a, uh, be just the uh, over, over, uh, you know, responsive and, and getting them, um, to really know, like, and trust you through some of those emails. And I know it sounds, it sounds like really basic, right? Like, I mean, it's good old fashioned one-on-one business marketing, right? It's like, be, you know, good to your customers, give them a good user experience. And those reviews will follow. All right. And I know some people have said, well, most people don't like to leave a review. That may be true, but there's going to be a handful that do. So why don't you just connect with all of them? And then that, that, uh, that messaging that you do will allow them to be reminded that, uh, you're a small business and that you really want to make sure that they're happy. And you want to also let, have them let Amazon know that you're doing a good job. That's how I would phrase it. Uh, so Hopefully that's helped you. Good luck. Keep it going. And uh, yeah, it sounds like you have found the winning formula for picking a product. So I'd go out there and I would do it again. Um, so definitely keep at it and keep me posted on that. All right. So guys, I think that's going to wrap it up for this session of Ask Scott. This has been awesome. I really enjoy doing these, as you guys know. 
And like I've said before, if you guys have a question that you want aired on an upcoming Ask Scott session, head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash ask. If you want to download the show notes, the transcripts, uh, or leave a comment even, you can head over to the blog at theamazingseller.com forward slash 280, and you'll find all of the goodies over there. And one last thing, again, could you guys do me a quick favor? If you guys have found this episode or any other episodes for that matter valuable, Share them with someone that you think that would enjoy it, okay? Or if you think there's someone out there like us, go ahead and share it with them. That would be awesome, all right? So, guys, that's pretty much going to wrap it up. If you guys are listening to this on Friday, have an awesome, amazing weekend. If you guys are listening to this during the week or whatever time, have an awesome rest of your day, all right? And uh, and keep, keep at it, all right? So, guys, that's it. That's going to wrap it up. Remember, I'm here for you. I believe in you and I'm rooting for you, but you have to, you have to, come on, say it with me, say it loud, say it so very proud. Take action. Have an awesome, amazing day and I'll see you right back here on the next episode.